once around the Whirlpool Galaxy, a lovely object to observe through a small telescope. And the uh, better your telescope, the more fantastic it looks. A grand design spiral galaxy with a twist, which you can already see on the screen there. Now, the Whirlpool lives in the constellation Canis Venatici, the hunting dogs, which lies below the tail of the great bear. It's not a particularly prominent constellation. It does have one interesting star, Cor Caroli, the brightest of uh, the stars within the group. Uh, but there are a number of galaxies present, and the Whirlpool galaxy was first discovered in 1773 by Charles Messier, that great comet hunter, and he put it in his catalogue as number 51, so we often call it just M51. The first person to observe that it was more than just a nebula, a cloud of gas in the sky, was William Parsons, 3rd Earl Ross. He resided at Burr Castle, shown at the top left there, and in the grounds he built the Leviathan of Parsons Town, a 72-inch reflecting telescope, absolute monster instrument. You can see it in the image there between the two retaining walls. Um, and of course, it can only move up and down and a little bit side to side. It was the largest telescope in the world at the time, although using a speculum metal mirror rather than a glass mirror limited its uh, light gathering capacity somewhat, but it was huge. And it enabled Lord Ross to do this diagram drawing at the bottom right, 1845, of the galaxy, the Whirlpool galaxy, showing the spiral structure for the first time. He was the very first to observe that. And also to see that little blob on the side there, which is perhaps the most interesting part of it. So what do we now know? Well, it's a smaller galaxy than the Milky Way. It's only 88% of the diameter. And of course, that means it's smaller in both uh, dimensions, sideways and thinner. And the result is that there's only about 10% of the total mass of our Milky Way present, 160 billion solar masses, not 1.5 trillion. And it's also estimated to be a very young galaxy, only 400 million years old. That's uh, less than a tenth the age of our sun and a lot less than the Milky Way, which dates back even further. It's part of a group. A lot of galaxies are part of a group. This one has its own group, the M51 group, about 23 to 31 million light years from us. And it comprises the Whirlpool galaxy, the Sunflower galaxy, which is the one at the bottom there, a very fluffy looking galaxy, still got the spiral arms there, and a couple of smaller ones, which just have those new general catalog numbers of 5023 and 5229 and a somewhat more lenticular irregular sort of galaxies a little bit smaller and this group well it might be associated with the m101 pinwheel galaxy and its group we're not quite sure they're possibly slightly too far away to really be classed as the same group but it does make for fantastic images when you point really good telescopes at it uh, the image on the left there is in visible light, and you can see the nucleus in the centre and the spiral arms winding away from it with the dirty, dusty material in the spiral arms, lots of filaments running everywhere, and lots and lots of H2 regions, those pink bits in the spiral arms. Those are where new stars are forming. And if we look in infrared on the right, then you can really see the activity in the spiral arms is uh, definitely keeping them at a much higher average temperature, warming them up dramatically. Here's four more images at different wavelengths. So we've got the visible spectrum on the left. Then we have the visible green, blue and infrared merged together. The third one along is three different colours from three different infrared wavelengths at uh, 3.6, 4.5 and 8 microns. And then we've got a far infrared image at 24 microns. And each one of them reveals different aspects of the structure of this uh, arrangement to us. 
they can already see in these images that the blob that William Parsons discovered seems to be sitting just behind a long tail of the spiral arm going out towards the top of this particular set of images. And that is a small galaxy, uh, sometimes called M51b. And we think that this galaxy has passed through the disk of the main galaxy, possibly twice, once around 600 million years back when the galaxy were just beginning to form. And then again, more recently, about 100 million years. Now, there are various plumes of material. You can see these white ghostly patches at the bottom of the diagram there that have been erupted away. This is tidal disruption in the struggle between the gravity of the two bodies, hurling stars and gas out away in these great big long plumes. And the northwest plume, that's uh, 140,000 light years in length overall. It's, uh, in fact, longer than the diameter of the main galaxy. Again, if we uh, delve into the galaxy and use different wavelengths, we can see that star formation going on, highlighted in the purple and yellow patches in the spiral arms. There is a terrific amount of it going on. And this could be triggered by the merger that is underway, the galactic interaction causing a disruption in the type with the tidal forces or it could just be because this is a rather young galaxy we're not entirely sure what the trigger process is as a result of all those new stars forming though you get a lot of giant stars formed and those don't live very long and explode as supernovae and there's three detections of supernovae that have been revealed here we've got images of each of them sn 1994i top right that is a type 1c supernova, so a very massive star, which had already blown away the unburned hydrogen of its outer envelope, leading to the spectrum of the light coming from it being from the interior helium core. Um, so it's entirely dominated by helium. That's why it's described as type 1c. Supernova 2005CS shown bottom right is much more of a traditional core collapse type 2 supernova from a standard red supergiant star and 2011 dh also type 2 but showed a much bluer average color and the progenitor for that was probably rather unusual in that it was a yellow supergiant that exploded we've also seen a rather strange eruption that was a supernova imposter and the two photographs here show the before and after effects of it so on the 5th of march 2019 you can see the bright dot there and in the 2005 image in color it's gone but this wasn't a supernova it was a luminous red nova it was two stars crashing into each other fairly rare event and the Spitzer Space Telescope was able to take a pre-image and actually find the culprit, the progenitor system where this erupted. Now the image at the bottom is not of this object, that's actually V838 Monoceretos which was in our galaxy where we could see the process erupting much more uh, detail and closer than all the way out to M51, but we think this was the same type of thing. Now, deep in the nucleus of the galaxy, there's also a lot of activity. It's called an active galactic nucleus um, or a type 2 Seyfert galaxy. And the central black hole is presently feeding on material falling into it, not unexpected for a young galaxy. And the result of that is a lot of radiation coming away from the accretion disk that's formed around the central black hole. And in 1992, the Hubble Space Telescope took the picture on the right of the heart of the galaxy, and it shows the light coming away from the central black hole region and the accretion disk with a sort of dark cross, and that's dust 
blocking our line of sight. Uh, originally, they thought there were two sources of light either side of that mark. You can see the brightest regions there, but a higher resolution image revealed what was going on. Now, we've also discovered possibly the first extra galactic planet lurking out there in M51 in the Whirlpool Galaxy. But this was detected by an X-ray observation. The Chandra Space Telescope, an X-ray telescope, detected a source of X-rays, M51 ULS-1, and this is an X-ray binary. It's a classic example of a collapsed star, so a neutron star or a black hole, we're not entirely sure which, that is accreting matter and pulling a streamer of matter away from its swollen companion, which is, in this case, a massive blue hot supergiant star. It's rapidly losing mass, and it's then spiraling in, in a death spiral, into the gravity well of the collapsed star. And that is resulting in a lot of friction, raising the temperature in the accretion disk, causing X-rays to be emitted. And what Chandra spotted was a, a repeat pattern of a dip in the X-rays caused, we assume, by the passage of a planet about the size of Saturn, perhaps a little smaller, passing across in front of the source of the X-rays and blocking the light. So it's orbiting around a few tens of astronomical units away from the centre and repeatedly getting in our line of sight and blocking the X-rays. So it'd be fantastic to uh, be able to confirm this observation and have discovered the first extragalactic planet, a planet orbiting in another galaxy entirely. And with that, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you've enjoyed that.